So how do you become a far master? Well, stick around or I'm gonna tell you on tonight's episode. But first, good evening, Agile Acquisition Enthusiasts. Welcome back to the Underground Digital Tiki Bar. It's Friday night, and that means it's time for another episode of Agile Acquisitions and Alcohol. Cheers. So I recently received a question uh, on one of my previous videos that breaks down how to use the FAR, asking me, how does someone become an expert or a master of the FAR? And that's a really great question. I remember when I was coming up through the ranks, watching the more senior and experienced contracting officers talking about the FAR, and it felt like they had the whole thing memorized and they were constantly just throwing out specific sections of the FAR and what it referenced and they knew how it related to the other portions. And I just remember being very inspired by that and thinking to myself, I'm gonna get there someday. So I think the first thing you have to do to become a FAR master is want to become a FAR master because there's probably lots of other things you become a, you could become a master of um, and it'd probably be more useful at dinner parties or uh, making friends, I don't know. But for those of us who are FAR nerds, self-proclaimed FAR, FAR nerds and think it's interesting and want to become really good at it, I think there's a couple of tips I could give you. One is you have to understand what the FAR is and how it's set up. The FAR, the Federal Acquisition Regulations, is a section of the CFR, or the Code for Federal Regulations. And the FAR contains the provisions and clauses, regulations required to do business with the federal government, or as the federal government, depending on which side you stand on. And the way the FAR is structured is in, is in different chapters or sections. And then each of those sections have a number of subsections. And then each of those subsections reference other portions of the FAR. When you look at the entire FAR, it's, it's almost impossible, um, unless you have an endemic, endemic memory, to try to memorize the entire book. And there are courses that you can take that will teach you like FAR 101. Um, really, the key is understanding how to navigate it, how to move from one section to the other. Um, when I was first learning to use the FAR, I mean, it was a physical book and you would highlight and tag and bookmark. Um, and then you would just flip back and forth. And then every year or twice a year, uh, depending on how often you got an updated FAR, uh, you'd have to move all of your references over to the new book. Um, and that in and itself is a great way to learn the sections of the FAR because you have to flip through and find your sections and then relabel it and carry your notes over. It's less common now. Uh, there are tools. Uh, I helped create something called myfar.io, which does an, is kind of an automated FAR and helps you navigate that way and bookmark and electronically, have an electronic contents uh, and make notes. And that way it preserves it as the FAR updates. But without that, there's also other online versions. And most people use online versions and Google is super helpful. So memorizing the FAR becomes significantly less important if you generally have access to a computer when you're needing to know this information. Uh, if you happen to work inside SCIFs or other facilities that don't have access to the internet while you're working, um, then you, you kind of have to know this stuff or make your notes ahead of time. But here's the real secret. Uh, most of the time when you're a contracting specialist or a contracting officer or otherwise beginning to engage uh, in acquisition regulations, you're most likely going to be focused on a specific type of work. Rarely are you doing construction contracts and IT contracts and um, services contracts all at the same time. So the best thing you can do is focus on those sections of the FAR that are most relevant to the type of work you're doing and start by learning the, the subsections of the FAR and getting an understanding of the parts that are relevant to you. And then you'll, over time, as you're using those subsections, you'll get a very deep expertise on those areas. Most people in contracts uh, move around uh, and will get exposure to different types of contracting. And in doing so, you'll become an expert at those other sections. One of the things I used to do, uh, remember I'm qualifying this as I was a FAR nerd, um, is a friend of mine and I would uh, do far offs. So we would actually just quiz each other and it was fun. It was like a competitive thing. 
And we would have actual like, oh yeah, but did you know this? And then we would try to challenge each other by citing other parts of the FAR. Um, and we would have the book with us and we would highlight why we were doing it. And it was just kind of a fun uh, busting each other's chops and learning and getting better at the same time. And that's helpful too. And I think that kind of brings me back to my original point. You have to have an interest in doing that and getting there. Uh, and then it's just like anything else that you want to become a master at. You got to practice, you got to use it. And uh, the more you get exposed to it, the more comfortable you get. I don't think you have to necessarily be a master to be really good at using the FAR, especially, like I said, with the internet, knowing the keywords to search up. Uh, here's a hint, if you're searching on my FAR or the Googles or wherever else, and you just type FAR, and then the specific phrase or type of regulation that you're interested in. Um, so if you're trying to look up conflicts of interest, FAR, F-A-R, conflicts of interest, you'll most likely get the relevant hits right off the bat. And so, you know, experiment with that. And then, you know, I'm a big fan of when I'm learning something, I think writing it down helps with retention. So have a little scrap of paper and just keep a running list of every time you look up something on the internet, what was it that you looked up? And where was it located in the FAR? And before you know it, you'll just be spitting that out in meetings and some young aspiring contract specialist will look to you as an inspiration for the future. So there you have it. Some tips on how to become an expert in the FAR. I hope you found this helpful. And if you did, make sure you subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Remember you can listen to this and all my other videos on the podcast forum of your desire. And until next week, cheers.